so today we're going to be doing a fun, fun, fun deck that showed up recently, well, recently in the entirety of modern, the Hammer Time. We played it once before on this channel, and we're going to revisit it now that it's more of a tier one deck. Uh, the idea is to play out a Colossus Hammer and equip it to either an Inkmoth Nexus or just a creature and smack them for 10 damage or kill them on the spot. Um, to help with that, as far as artifact wise, we've got a cranial plating, which will grow our creatures based on the number of artifacts, and then a shadow spear as a way to give them trample. Um, to help with the equip costs, since hammer itself has an equip cost of eight, we're never getting to eight mana, especially in modern. We're running four pure steel paladins, so that way, if we have three artifacts out, equipment costs zero to equip. Another fun thing to do is Paradise Mental as a way to generate more mana than what we've got. By instant equip or equipping with Piercer Paladin for zero, tapping the creature for mana, and then re-equipping Paradise Mental somewhere else. <laughs> um, as far as creatures, we've got three Memnites and four Ornithopters. And Inkmoth Nexus are going to be our main threats. For protection, we've got a Giver of Runes as a way to give our things protection from everything except colorless because giving something protection from colorless will make the artifacts fall off. We've got Sigarda's Aid as our way to give our equipments um, in flash. And then when they enter, we get to attach it to something. So it's turn one Sigarda's Aid into turn two, kill him with a hammer, maybe. Um... And then for searching, we've got Steel Shaper's Gift, which is a sorcery speed. Go grab an equipment from your library, put it into your hand, shuffle. And we've got Stoneforge Mystic, which is the exact same effect, except it's on a creature. Uh, that's the rundown of the main board. We're splashing black for Godless Shrine and then Silent Clearing. Ours are black sources, Silent Clearing, mainly as a way to draw another card if we run out of gas too quickly. Um... For this sideboard, the main reason that we're running black is for Thoughtseize, so that way we can stop our opponent from being able to stop us. And then an Unearth, so that way if they have creature removal, we can say, no, 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 no. We want that creature. It's going to come back. Um, then we've got Oryok Champion, again, for the pro red, pro black. And the another creature enters the battlefield, gain a life. Not too terribly relevant, but not irrelevant. So we'll see how that part plays out. And then Alluris, because everything costs two or less. And then we've got Pithing Needle to deal with Planeswalkers and Spell Bomb as a way to deal with things in the graveyard. Because graveyard decks are always a thing. Alrighty. That's the basic rundown of how Hammer Time works. And I'll see you guys in some leagues or in the matches. We won the die roll. We will gladly take the play. Reveal ourselves to the Lurus here. Opponent's a Yorion deck. So this will be an interesting one. Um, we have plenty of ways to search. No way to instance. So we'd be stuck with basically a 2-2 with Trample and Lifelink for a bit. Boom, boom again. Um, this one we will go ahead and keep bottoming Steel Shaper's Gift here. We don't have any turn one, which is awkward. But we do get to do our fun bobble things. So they've got a Skyclave that we need to worry about off the top here. We draw a card off a of bobble. They draw their Skyclave. <laughs> okay, they go fetching. Temple Garden shocks it in. Birds of Paradise. Okay. Go ahead and see what the top of their library is. A Court of Calling. So some Yorion Chord deck is what we're facing here. 
We draw two. That's not a lot here. Go ahead and drop out this giver. And we really need a second land source. Is what we were hoping to hit. We did not, which is very unfortunate. So we know that their hand consists of Skyclave, Cord, and something else. They might go ahead and Skyclave here to get rid of the Giver. And that's my guess as to what they're about to play here. Yep, there's the Skyclave out of hand. Skyclave triggers, hits Giver. Yep. There we go. Two mana Stoneforge. Yeah, it's still Stoneforge. Say yes. Get ourselves a hammer here. Pass the turn. Because land off the top, we can go pure steel, hammer, suit up, swing for 10. They can currently not cord or cord for two if they hit a green source here. There's a wall. Okay, so we're four color at least. <laughs> we draw ourselves a land. That's actually really good for us. We'll go ahead and get ourselves a basic. One, two, pure steel. Hammer and draw ourselves a card. Unless they have the force of negation. Ephemerates there. Okay. Does this to eat. Yep. Eats the 2-2. Two, two. We get ourselves a 1-1. One, one. Then we have the hammer down. Yep. But can't do anything with it. Pass the turn. Opponent had the ephemerate. Now they get to rebound. I'm assuming this probably rebounds on the wall. Okay, and flickers there, gives ourselves a 2-2, and then eats hammer. Okay, that's fine. We've got another stone forge. Okay, and five mana here. Acidic slime. Yeah. Eats a land. Okay. We can Stoneforge and go get ourselves here. Arguably Shadow Spear, because we're not going to land a hammer. Play this out and pass the turn for now. We've got a good amount of blockers, but we're in a tricky spot from here on out. We're out. They've got plenty. They can cord for three, which means they can get another Skyclave and eat whatever. So we are not in a good spot. <laughs> what do we have for four color Yorion? I guess this would be thought sees. Yeah, just thought sees. There's the stupid card. Uro, do we have the tails end here?
So five cord for three. Oh, that's beautiful. Does that hit Soul Herder? Yep. So we're looking at four color Soul Herder. Exiles Acidic Slime. Okay, oh, we see the writing on the walls. We're going to go ahead and concede this. We're not going to get anything past that. We don't have removal. We draw Sigarda's aid into Giver. They, yeah, nope. We're not getting past Acidic Slime there. Um, yeah. Hot seizes come in. Shave on the gift. We'll cut down two gifts. Cut down the spring leaves. And eh, no, spring leaves help us fix. Eh, yeah. Cut down the spring leaves. Or not like so. Let's see what we can do. Against four color Yorion. It's more a four color soul herder, actually. But still. Hmm. We need a hand this time that has more explosive and less redraw because we kept a hand that had two bobbles. Okay, yes, I would love to play first. Yes, for real, the Luris. Thought sees giver Sigarda's aid. I mean, it's missing a hammer, but we've got the Ink Moth kill. We'll lead off with Silent Clearing Giver last turn. There's not much we want to remove turn one from them. Okay, that's not terrible. Inkmoth Nexus, pay a black thought season. You see Skyclave, Collector Oof. Um, I really don't like having to pick between Skyclave and Oof. But it's gotta be Oof. And an Ornithopter and pass the turn here. Yeah, just pass. So there's the wooded foothills. They fetch. <laughs> and shock. And skyclave. Cool. Assuming the skyclave targets a giver. Yep. Now we want hammer off the top when the game. That is not hammer. So we will go ahead and redraw here. Find ourselves a stone forge. Okay. And so we can go search for the hammer. And with what they've got, they'll be able to counter with mystic sake. Assuming they just hold up. Yep. Okay, 
Okay, get in for three. We're not gonna block that ever. You go down to 13, they've got Mystic Snake up. Play out the Stone Forge, try to get this Mystic Snake. Yep, there we go. Snake's gone. And we pass the turn. So, uh, hammer off the top. The problem is, hammer off the top doesn't do it. We need one more land here. I don't like that they're holding. Not gonna block. We know their hand consists of bird, noble, and two unknown. Hmm. Okay. Bird comes in, so they have a way to block. Let's go ahead and do silent and clearing, crack the clearing. I'm somewhat scared of a path here. At the same time, they would have to have exactly path. We'll go ahead and get in for one chip damage. Yeah, I'm going to say the problem is they're just never going to block until they need to. So we need Hammer and Shadow Spear here. Or for them to tap down their bird. Alright, there's their red. So this is an Uro. Deputy. Okay. Pretty sure we lose now. Because they do that, they hit us for four. They hit us for four either way. Swings with just the snake. We take four, go down to five. It's unfortunate that we flooded out game two. And there's the Shadow Spear, which would buy us Trample in Lifelink, which buys us exactly one single turn. Is that worth it? One turn against this deck buys us what? If we hit exactly hammer. That's our only play. Newly controlled tap for mana. Animate here. Play out the cigar to aid. Again, combat swing here. Make them think that they have to block. Bird does indeed go a blocking. We'll play out the Shadow Spear to gain Trample. Get in for one infect and kill the bird. Then we pass here. We need exactly hammer off the top. Because they can only deal five. We'd be at two. We need them to have no interaction and us to get hammer. So they've got one card in hand. They swing for five. We take it, go down to two. And we're dead on board next turn. They put Yorion into hand and they have four mana. So if they have Mystic Snake here, either way, that's not a card that we needed to see. So we can triple block taking nothing losing all of our creatures 
So there's no way out. All right, taking our loss to mm, four color Yorion or four color Soul Herder is probably more likely is what that should be called. We would draw on land and then Moto's throwing a fit, of course. All right, match two has been found. Let's and we won the die roll. Let's go ahead and take this play. Reveal ourselves to the Lurus here. And got a Springleaf Drum, a Giver, a Bobble, and Thopters. This is very much an affinity style hand. I don't know if it's what we should be keeping in this scenario. Opponent Mulligan to six. Okay, we skip our draw step. We go Clearing, White, Springleaf Drum. Ornithopter, Memnite, Bobble, this tap for white, Giver, fast turn. We don't have any way to get our things out early, but we now get to see what our opponent's on based off of a reveal. Arcane Flight, so blue-white boggles, great. And a Confluence. And green boggly boy, yep. We draw and draw. All right. This tap for white, tap for white, play out pure steel paladin. Combat swing for one. I'm assuming they're not gonna block, but hey. Now it gives us this ornithopter. to be able to block the blade cover scout. <laughs> yep. Curious obsession sounds good. Arcane flight gives it flying sounds fine. They have to swing, so they don't have to set Curious Obsession. We move to blocks. Do that. Like to pick this creature and give it pro green. No damage to me. They don't draw a card. In step happens, we draw a hammer, which pretty much seals this game away, does it not? One life hammer. Yep, and draw ourselves a card here. Okay. I'll say we'll then have a 10. We'll have ourselves an 11 11. We draw another pure steel and then a shadow sphere. Shadow Sphere definitely seals that. So we're facing blue, white, and or Bant Boggles here. Um, Nazis doesn't seem bad. Just as a way to rip apart their hand. Again, I feel our search effects are a bit on the slow side. I like the Springleaf Drum, I like the Spear, I like the Hammer, I like that. Ba, 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 ba. Arguably, I could see taking out a Bobble. Keeping in Stoneforge. Yeah, let's try that. 
run it like so they didn't reveal a Luris, so I don't think they're a Luris build of Boggles. Um, sure. Again, doesn't do much, but it's got to give her an Ornithopter on turn one, which is probably how we're going to just win this game is just block for days. So the Temple Garden definitely makes it bant because we saw blue and that's our green and white. Hmm. A hammer. Nice. Shock that in. Go giver. Ornithopter. Bobble. Stop on their upkeep. Just to see what they're drawing for the turn. And gives us one card less in our hand if they have hand disruption, which they shouldn't. Okay, there's a curious obsession. It looks like they kept a one lander here. And now they're holding back the glade cover. Stony Silence. Activated abilities of artifacts can't be activated. That's fine. Not really. But that's fine. We draw ourselves a card here. <laughs> we draw ourselves a useless artifact. So we can land and play down Giver. And we could drop Springleaf Drum. Not going to, however, and we're just gonna pass the turn here. Yep. <laughs> Blue, give it arcane flight. They now have themselves a 2 2 flyer. And a boggle. It's short. So we're to the point where we can't block both in fear. Well, we can. We can block, block, and then use this giver to give the giver that's blocking protection, and then. All right, all right. That in steps happens. We draw a giver three. Interesting. <laughs> We'll have lots of ways to protect our creatures. All right, flooded strand. Sorry that I'm yawning a bit. I didn't think I was tired, but apparently my body says it is. All right. They've got two cards in hand. One of them is this curious obsession that we know about. So we need Sigarda's aid to equip the hammer. We will be fetching off this Marsh Flats just to thin the deck. It can't grab a Godless Shrine, but it doesn't need to. Okay, so we definitely are right on the call of Bant Boggles. The No Luris makes me think that they have Leyline of Sanctity. They might have boarded that card out. They're representing Cryptic Command.
we can drop this pure steel paladin down and pass the turn then we can fetch on their instep because we forgot to do that last turn Shh. okay begin combat nothing happens we'll go ahead and crack this fetch land opponent seems to be debating about wanting to do something on their own instep Wow. Um, we'll go ahead and play this redraw. It can't be activated, but we don't need it to be activated. Okay. Play down the Sink Moth Nexus and pass the turn. Um, we could swing with the Pure Steel here, actually. I like swinging with the pure steel. And take them down to 13. Down to 12. So Sigurd is eight off the top. If they don't have the counter spell for it, wins us this game. Because we can go pro green and then drop the hammer. So they finally play this curious obsession that's been in their hand. So they now kind of got to attack. At which point we block with the ornithopter, give it pro green. Double white daybreak. First strike vigilance lifelink. Sure. Doesn't have trample. Give it pro green. Yep, damage happens. You don't deal damage, so you don't gain life. Sigarda's aid. That is not Sigarda's aid. Okay, so go ahead and do over here pro green. Swing for two. Pass the turn. We might have to drop this. I don't want to drop the hammer. Yep. <laughs> the, because of this curious obsession, they kind of sort of have to do this every single time, which is a bit unfortunate for them. Because we do this, green, and say, okay, damage doesn't happen. It's funny, we could be animating the ink moth and shrinking their guy. 
We're going to start doing that next turn. If we can't find our answers. They've got two cards in hand. We should have put Luris into hand. Just that way we could start bobbling. Um, we can go ahead and actually do that. You, this, Luris. Luris on the field. Now we get to start seeing what they're drawing every turn. And cast Bobble. And we start digging through our deck a bit more. Go ahead and give this pro green. In combat, get in for two. Oh, that's right. We can't bobble because of Stony. That's why we weren't bothering. See, I know that I think of things, and then I forget them. Welcome to magic. Hmm. But that's fine, because putting Luris down gives us a two-turn clock here, because we can give Pro Green, Pro Green, get in, and leave up our Pro Green blocker. Uh, opponent concedes. All right. Taken down Bant Boggles with Hammer Time. A bit on the slow side for us. Let's see, we would have drawn second Hammer, at which point we definitely would drop one just as a redraw effect. We draw a second Paladin. Okay. Onwards to game three. See you guys there. Let's see. We've got the search effect. We've got two. They revealed Ovash, so this is probably Odd Red. Um, we're not just doing a lot. And this gets picked apart by that. This, on the other hand. Yeah keep bottom of the steel shapers it's a red bow mat yeah I get in for one it's not the turn two but it's a turn two 10 10 or turn two 11 11 and pay two life play down cigar to aid And drop the Memnite. So if they have removal, they have the removal. You can't do much about it. Yep. But that's fine, because then we have pure Steel Paladin. They exile a card. It's to us. What an awkward draw. From the aspect of now we could insta-kill with the Nexus. But we don't want to do that. Because this card exists. Okay. Uh, they've just got it all. They'll exile a card. We go down to 14. I really don't need this many cigar to Zades. Steel Shaper, we can go get the hammer. We don't have anything that gives X proof, right? Paradise Mantle is. Yeah. Nothing that gives hex proof, so we'll go ahead and just get hammer here. Say go. Well, I guess we now just ping in until they try to lava dart. Uh, we need to land in the second hammer here. Is the ideal draw. Brr. Try to get in. Yep. 
do that in step. Let's see if they try to get rid of it here. Looks like they're going to, which is unfortunate for us. Okay. They chose not to, which is great for us. Assuming they get in for one, and this bow mat now has five cards under it. Extremely unfortunate we go down to 12. We'll go ahead and make it 11 here. There's another land, which makes me want to go Lurus this turn. So that means next turn we'll have Luris into Pure Steel Hammer. They stomp us, sure. We go down to nine. down to eight <laughs> we'll make it seven so we have Luris plus pure steel plus hammer down to six don't have double bolt Lyris of the Dream Den. White, white. Pure Steel Paladin coming in. Bolting me. Okay. Lava darts me, and then we'll be able to sack them both. Making sure they do it. <laughs> or has stomp. Okay. We would have equipped up and then gained 13. Oriok champions, definitely unearths ES. What comes out here? Memnites, definitely. Just a bunch of X1s. Don't buy us a whole lot. These are okay because of Pro Red. Um, Giver's fine. We need three more cuts. This, take out the fast stuff. At that. Eh. Yeah, that, that, and the mantle. No, we'll take out the plating because we're removing five artifacts. Love to take the play here. Reveal the Luris. Um, yeah, we keep this. Just from the aspect of double Oriok champion, it's going to be very hard for them to come back from. Just having a blocker. It doesn't block their bow mat, which is the most unfortunate part. But it does block everything else their deck is doing. And the Shadow Spear is nice for the lifelink. Let's see that turn one bow mat. 
Soul Scar Mage, sure. I really don't like clearing here. Come on, opponent. Let me fetch. You're not going to stop me from doing this. I mean, they might. They might be running Shadow of a Doubt. Oriak Champion. Hmm. All right. There we are. We will pass the turn. Okay. Swift Spear. We will go always yes. Always yield. All right. They went with a very creature heavy hand. A swing uh, for the house. We'll block because we have protection and they're out of stomp mana at the moment. Sigarda's aid. It's an interesting one. Go ahead and drop second Oriok here. All right, there we go. Pay one life, drop the cigar to Zade, pass the turn. And next turn, we'll have this Shadow Spear available to us. All right, there's their third land. Let's see, the problem is if they have the stomp, we get punished severely for blocking. So we will take the damage here. Yep. And then Season Pyromancer. Okay. Well, I want... Oh, there's auto yields. Okay, which will turn off auto yields. Always yes, always yes, always yield. And we gain some life. So they pitched a Swiss Spear there, which is nice for us. Hey, there's a pretty good one. Spear Steel, baby. Um, We can tap this, animate it. Well, first, does the hammer resolve? Yep. Stack there. Move the hammer, draw ourselves a card. Get ourselves a second cigar to aid. Animate the ink moth. So give this equip zero. So that way we have a 12-12 with lifelink and trample. And pro red. Cool. All right. And so at that point, they just can't deal with that card. And then we draw Stoneforge. Okay. And run it back. We just need more Oriok hands and them to keep more creature heavy stuff like they had. Reveal the Luris. We've got an Oriok, we've got the Unearth, and we've got a Giver. This looks pretty good to me. 
It's a little bit painful from the fact that this is Fetch Shock turn one. But then it's an Oriok champion and we're off to the races. It's Fetch Shock. Give her a pass. Okay, Swiss Spear, Swiss Spear. From Firebolts. All right. <laughs> that hurts. We go down to 12. They might have kept a fast enough hand here. There's a hammer, which is real good for us. This Snow Covered Plains, White, White, Oriok Champion. Pass the turn. Blocking here is stupid beyond belief. So we're not going to do it. Go ahead and kill me, opponent. The reason we're not blocking is because Stomp will remove the protection. And then we lose our Oriok champion. Whereas here, they have to have Spell Spell. Or Lava Dart. Lava Dart and Stomp will do it. Yep. Uh, they had the fast enough hand. Because we go down to eight, and then they flash back to Lava Dart. Yep. So even blocking there, we stop four damage. We'd be at four. Or we'd be at three. We draw or we draw Oriok. We play Oriok. We unearth the Oriok. Okay. I mean, I can't. And so we'd have that. We'd have two Oriocs going. Problem is we'd be at three. That's one bolt. We won the die roll. Do that, reveal ourselves the Luris here. And is it's funny because it's keepable. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Marsh Flats pay, get snow covered planes, and drop the Sigarda's aid, go Ornithopter, Ornithopter, Mantle. Hey, equip an Ornithopter. Islet Pass. Okay. Shadow Spear. Burst Lightning, two damage to that target. Okay. And now we go white, white, equip to here. That's the turn. We have a 1-3 with flying and trample that's sat down. You prevented a 1 damage. You took 1 damage. Swift Spear, sure. Does opponent have the bolts? Does not look like it. We need land off the top here. So that way we'll have... All right, lights up the stage. It's very good for us because that means that they aren't holding up mana for this turn. We don't have a way to grow this, or we do. Yep. <laughs> I was like, oh, yep, nope. I can't beat a 1113 trample lifelink. All right. <laughs> 
we do that. So we're facing what my guess is is blue red prowess. Again, red Oriac champion seems pretty good. Unearth doesn't seem terrible. Memnites seem bad. Plating seems bad. Drums seem bad. Run it like so. Do the exact same thing that we did against the other prowess deck and just hope to not have them destroy us. Gonna be a little hilarious. We'll keep from the aspect of its Sigarda's aid into Stoneforge Mystic into Shadow Spear Hammer. Yep, Soulscar Mage. Sounds good. What a fun draw. They hold up mana and they get in for one. Yep, yep. Go down to four cards in hand. Still holding up mana. White one stone forge. We'll go get the hammer here. I say that like there's any option. Okay. Yeah. What? Burst lightning. Cool. They burst lightning there. We don't have any mana, but that's fine. Um, if they tap out, they're dead. If we draw a planes, we go pure steel shadow spear. So land. I really don't want to commit anything to this board. So we'll just pass. No point to animate because we can only animate and equip once. One more land and we can animate equip twice, meaning that they'd have to have two burn spells in their three cards. Not impossible, but... Swings for one. We go down to 17, goes to our end step. We draw our planes. A very nice draw here, because now we can go pure steel past turn. And uh, instant speed equip these. And try to go um, Shadow Spear, see if they bite on the Shadow Spear, and then Colossus. Or just double Colossus. I don't like the double Colossus play. Okay. Opponent concedes. <laughs> they only know that we have the hammer in hand. So, but we'd still go ahead and try to hammer on their instep. Get a draw from the ETB, which would be <laughs> Steel Shapers. All right. So if the hammer resolved, we then have a 12-12. If they try to bolt in response, we could do another hammer, especially with that other draw. Yeah. All right. 2-2 two, two with hammer. Let's see if we can go 3-2 or better. Oh. I can't go or better. 3-2 is the best we can do. And instantly found our match 5 opponent. All right. Okay, we would love to take the play. We've got Alaris here. And we've got lots of searching, but no way to insta equip. So we will mulligan. But we will keep this hand. Bottoming. I guess it's bottom bobble.
because we can go godless shrine into play tapped memnite memnite past turn Actually, we'll just play a singleton Memnite. We don't need to play double Memnite. Because we can go Pure Steel Paladin next turn. Just to keep as many artifacts in play as possible. A Plains and Passes. Okay. White, white, Pure Steel pass turn. Oh, well, we'll chip in for one. What's the worst that happens? In white, it's Pav. Bruh. Ghost Quarter. K. Okay. What? We're facing TXs? Axes wouldn't be fun for us here. There's the Thalia. So it definitely is TX's. Interesting. And so this nets us two mana. Can we do anything with that? We could lay down the hammer and have a big dude. Sure. Cast, pay one, and draw ourselves a card. Say yes, and then we'll just draw the hammer. Neat. Whip. Go one. Let's actually equip here. Go one, one, play down hammer. Draw ourselves another card. And then equip zero to here. In combat, swing for 12. Component takes 12. Arguably, we should move the hammer. That's my own fault. <laughs> For not thinking. Skyclave. Can Skyclave probably the paladin here? Is there a game plan? Right? Like, that's what you do. You hit the paladin. Definitely should have moved the hammer over. We're getting severely punished for a misplay there. And then a second aid. What does second aid buy us? Buys us aid plus gift for hammer. It then would have to leave up ghost quarter or they're dead to the ink moth nexus. And they have to block whatever we swing with as well. White one steel shapers gift here. Get hammer. And then we just have a 1-1 one, one that we're not going to swing with. E, what's up, Fluff? How you doing tonight? We are 2-2. Two, two. We had a severe punt where we forgot to move the hammer over to this Memnite a second ago. So we now have a hammer on board and a Piercer Paladin exiled by the Skyclave. They kind of sort of have to leave this Ghost Quarter up or they're dead to the hammer on the Ink Moth Nexus. They also have to be able to block this Memnite. Because we'll be able to put the hammer on whatever they don't. Or whatever they block. Dahlia's doing work against us, but...
think we're in a relatively all right spot. <laughs> They've got six cards in hand. You don't swing. You do not swing unless you have another creature opponent. They swing with the Thalia. No blocks. And opponent now loses unless they have path. Right? Because we can animate. We don't even need to animate. But we can just to threaten it. they don't have a way to flash in creatures so they go to block they block there we would like to hammer on the memnite that's not blocked so that way it doesn't get eaten alive by your ghost quarter show me the path opponent Okay, they had the path. Unfortunate. I would love to use path's ability and get ourselves a planes. They always have the path. And now we lose our Memnite. Which is fine, because we have Luris to go grab next turn. So we grab Luris. We need one more mana to play said Luris. Playing Luris doesn't buy us anything except a Memnite, but a Memnite's not bad because then it's an infinite blocker until we need something else. Um, not that I'm aware of. I'm not going to say no, because maybe, but. <laughs> Aruya, Forest, Mountain, Eric, Hex Drinker, Goyf. Is this just Gruel? Shenanigans, just red green aggro. Hmm. Okay, well, there's a vial finally. Yeah, gruel aggro. Looks nice. Gruel smash. Nice. It looks like a fun one. I hope it did well. I'm not going to ask how it did because then I get spoiled. <laughs> we take uh, four, go down to 14 here. And drum off the top. One of our worst draws at this point. Gives us something to do with our mana, but at the same time, it doesn't buy us anything. And now we'll have Luris get back Memnite. Not phenomenal. Okay, so they finally have their vial. There's a field. Now's when they should drop their Arbiter, kill my Ink Moth with their Ghost Quarter. To shut us off of mana. Opponent. Just because I say something doesn't mean you have to do it. It really doesn't. Okay, just a stone forge. 
just something that's gonna go grab batter skull <sighs> I need a way to put all of these into my graveyard Yep, there's the batter skull. So we're gonna have to deal with a batter skull here shortly. Looks like we're probably gonna be losing this game. I'm not gonna call it yet because there's still ways out. A pure steel paladin off the top here is brutal to them. Okay. Did opponent know what we were going to top deck there? White, white, one, Luris. And cast this Memnite. We got ourselves a blocker, boys. And now they can't field us. Because we've got the mana to pay. Hmm. And they'll be able to bring in their batter skull, however. So we do need a pure steel here. Because pure steel suit up. We still have the what's it called in the sideboard to go grab. Or not sideboard, uh, main board. We still have our shadow spear to gain trample. Okay, flicker wisp targets probably skyclave here is my guess that's what i would do if i was them yes it gives me a 2-2 two -two. you don't care about the 2-2 two -two because you then get rid of my luris which means i no longer have the infinite blocker it swings with just the thalia no swinging at all. Interesting. Yep. Tis happens. Ba, 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 ba. We're looking at one, two, three, four, five. We have six mana currently. We're almost to the point where we can just hard equip the hammer. Seven. Right. I'm not mathing this wrong. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we'll have enough next turn. A two. And then we can't, but then we'll be able to still pay two off of what we've got on the field here. Brings in a vial as second arbiter. As second arbiter so I can ignore the effect once I'm not gonna be able to ignore the effect anyway again we will tap for mana and tap for mana ignore the effect twice and now we go get shadow spear here
And we've got ourselves a 2-2. Two, two. And enough mana if we draw a land to kill them. Vile upticks to three, meaning that they probably have a Flicker Wisp and this is all for naught. If they get in for three through the air, I'm assuming this is going to be Field of Ruin, one of these, Ghost Quarter, the other. Shut us off of two mana so that we can't hard equip the... Okay. They seem to be allowing us to hard equip. What, are they eating the Sigarda's Aid? Yep, okay. Uh, they do indeed eat our Sigarda's Aid. And they now have a flash on three. They swing in for two, four, six, eight, eleven. 12. Why are they? Okay. We go down to six. Brrr. Ghost quarter me now, opponent. Okay. Destroy target land. I can't pay four. Um. What all could they have here? So, aid, spear. We have to leave one back to do hammer as well. We get blown out if they have the Flicker Wisp or the Skyclave. I guess we can swing with just the illusion, right? Because they can't flicker the illusion. They block with just Thalia. Shadow Sphere. Try to give it Trample and Lifelink. What do you have? Tap this, tap this, hammer. Hmm. <laughs> Show me the flicker wisp. Like I said, they needed to have exactly flicker wisp. Yep. <laughs> they get the flick of us, but then we're dead on board. All right. Good for them. Having everything that they needed. Um. I feel we're still favored here. There's something I really want to take out. Yeah. Nothing. And needles to be able to name vile so that way they can't flash in things. Um, as far as what we want to take out, I guess. Mystic and a steel shaper just so that way we don't have as much in our search. I can, I can see an argument for thought sees here, but at the same time. I don't feel that's what we want to be doing when we, I mean, we're on the play, so it would not terrible, but I feel we just keep a more explosive start.
ba -ba 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 -ba. We've got the paladin into a hammer on turn two. Yeah. Because now we go, ideally we hit a land here, is what we're hoping for. There's a giver, sounds good. And that is not what we wanted to see. So we could go ahead and suit up the paladin. I don't like going all in on a paladin. So we will go giver. Yeah, we'll go ahead and steal shapers here as well. Get ourselves down this or be able to get this hammer and hope to draw land. Because land into Paladin means very good things for us. Sure, you have the Ghost Quarter. What, Arbiter? Hmm. There's the Arbiter. So, land off the top here means we'll have a... Big Ornithopter, but won't have land. Sigarda's Aid. I mean, still works for me. Problem is, we're having to tap down our Giver for this, meaning if they have the path, we get destroyed. So we'll just pass the turn here. Unfortunate that it's turn. We've had two draw. No, one draw. Eh, I guess we've only had one draw at it. It makes sense that we haven't seen the land. So next turn, if we don't hit a land, we go Paladin off of the Ornithopter, leaving our Giver up. <laughs> and then suit up the giver with the shadow sphere um i could block and give for a white the problem is if they then have the path again but path gives us mana Well, it doesn't because Leonin Arbiter is out. <laughs> Can we just take a moment and appreciate that it's the one land, one of the five lands that we just did not need to draw? White, white, paladin. If they wanted to, they can path us now. And we lose our giver. Whip zero. Last turn. We have ourselves a two three. With lifelink, they are not going to swing with their arbiter anymore. Hmm. 
Hmm. Yep, I was say they have to path exactly our giver here. And it doesn't matter. So that happens. We cannot pay to ignore. And now they can ghost quarter us off of our land. Either or. I mean, it's not either or. You ghost quarter the planes here. And I am stuck in a terrible position. Looks like both of us kept relatively land light hands. Exile for each creature's controller search. Man, what a great set of cards for them to have. At this point is now we're just going to try to start getting in with Ornithopter. Yeah, you get in for two. Sigarda's Aid. Seems like a neat card. Yes. Swing for 10. Opponent now probably needs land off the top and can seal this game away from us. Opponent concedes. Why? They've got six cards in hand. They leave back. They can give protection from colorless until we can somehow get enough mana to equip this Shadow Sphere. That seems like an early concession to me. Okay. Um, run it back. And final game of the final match for this league. We've got Giver, Giver, Steel Shapers, Hammer, Mantle. We're missing a way to equip or move, but... Seems fine from the protection standpoint of things. Okay, there's the vial. Who knows? Pitting needle off the top? No. This will go get ourselves our basic planes and then give her pass the turn. They do that. <laughs> Get their vial on one. White, white, stone forge. Hmm. Arbiter. Okay. Arbiter makes me want to just hold back here. In case they have the path. Our issue is going to be if they have the double Arbiter. At double Arbiter, we're never going to be able to play anything anyway. There's the Field of Ruin. Not really what opponent wants to see there. Okay, they bring in something with a vial. It's a Thalia. So not nearly as scary and Skyclave Apparition. Yep. 
heats away our giver here. So even with the double giver, it does not matter. We were not going to be able to do it because the other giver would have summoning sickness. It's in for two. Kinda sorta gotta just say yeah. Land giver, say go. We need a way here to gain equip speed. Vial state at two. Interesting. Hmm. We can't get protection this turn, so we just got to take this 6 and go down to 11. Which feels awful. In step. Okay, we draw a marsh flats. This point it's silent clearing past the turn. We'll be able to block and give pro color on the Memnite here. I could file in another Arbiter, I guess. Yep. Okay, and that works too. Stone Forge, go get Batter Skull, and then we have to deal with a Batter Skull for the rest of the game. We're not going to really be able to do that. <laughs> they pay two, so they weren't stupid. Good for them. Fire and Ice. Interesting. Pro red, pro blue. Does not save them from anything we're doing. They've got one unknown in hand. Next turn we have pay for arbiter, fetch, and search. Vial goes up to three. Hmm. So they can tap, bring in, equip, swing, we give pro white. And block. Hmm, hoping that their card isn't path. Well, they won't have mana. Okay, they swing with those two. Wait, 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 wait. They activate Stoneforge. They did not put an artifact onto the battlefield. I mean, at this point we still block. Try to give it pro white. Cool. We take two. We 
we draw a card here, we draw Shadow Spear. Interesting draw. Okay, we'll cast the Ornithopter here. Play the Marsh Flats, pay for that. And search. No flicker effect. Nice. Search again. Get ourselves a hammer. Hope that we can draw ourselves our out. Yes, we won't have a land here. And we have to block two. Hmm. Okay. Violin, Flicker Wisp, Flicker, Sky Clay. No. Probably Flicker my own giver here. So I can't go pro white. I have to lose both my creatures. If I was them. Swing out. That is two, four, six, seven, ten. I then have to block. Okay. I guess we'd be blocking the Flicker Wisp. So that does make sense enough. Let's see. So 2, 4, 6, 7, 10 damage. We can block 4 of it. Taking 6. Going down to 2. We would need... It's impossible for us at this point. Although them tapping down there is not smart. As they do this, they get to equip. Ah, you equip there, hit for five in the air, plus an additional two off the ping, right? So that's seven that we can't block, and then we can block two of it. To make sure they swing out. Okay, and they swing out. And we go 2-3 with hammer time. Um, deck felt fun. It felt good. I just... We just didn't get there. And you know, sometimes that's gonna happen. But hey, it was fun. Definitely right up my alley as far as playstyle wise. Lots of lines to think of through. Um, yeah, I like it. See you guys in the next one.